This video explains how to insert a PNG image at certain axis positions in a ggplot2 plot using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example, and this example is based on the data frame that we can create with lines 2 to 4 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains two columns, which are called X and Y. And both of these columns contain numeric values. Now, if we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in line 6 and 7 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 7 of the code. So after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot and geompoint, as you can see in lines 9 to 12. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new plot object is appearing, which is called MyPlot. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of RStudio by running line 13 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a scatter plot with certain axis limits. Now let's assume that we want to add a PNG image to this plot at a certain axis position. Then we first need to load a PNG image. And in this example, I'm downloading a PNG file from Wikimedia, which is containing the flag of Switzerland. So if you run lines 15 to 17 of the code, a new PNG image of the flag of Switzerland is downloaded. And then in the next step, we need to import this PNG file into R. And we can do that using the PNG package. And first we need to install and load this package as you can see in lines 19 and 20 of the code. I have installed this package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 20 of the code. So after running this line of code, we are able to use the read PNG function as you can see in line 22. And within this function, we need to specify the name of our PNG file. And then we are saving this PNG file in a new data object, which we call my image one. So if you run line 22 of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new image file has been imported, which is called myImage1. And now in the next step, we can combine this image file with our plot. And for this, we need to install and load the grid package, as you can see in lines 24 and 25 of the code. I have installed this package as well, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 25. And then we also need to create a modified version of our PNG file, because at this point we have just imported the PNG file, but we have not added any access limits to this file yet. So if you run lines 27 to 42 of the code, our PNG file is updated accordingly. I will put all the code that I'm using in this tutorial into the description so you can just copy and paste it from there. However, if you run these lines of code, you can see that another plot object is appearing at the top right of RStudio, which is called myImageMod1. And we can draw this modified image by running line 43 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a plot that is showing the flag of Switzerland. And on the left side of this plot, you can see a certain axis range. So in this case, this range is ranging from minus 5 to plus 5. So in the next step, in lines 45 to 48 of the code, I'm also creating a modified version of our scatter plot, because my plan is to plot the flag of Switzerland on the left side and the plot that we have created before on the right side without any axis limits. So if you run lines 45 to 48 of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new plot object is appearing, which is called myplotmod. And by running line 49 of the code, you can see that we have created a scatter plot without any axis limits on the left side of the plot. So if we now want to combine our PNG file and our scatter plot, we also need to install and load the patchwork package, as you can see in lines 51 and 52 of the code. 
I have installed this package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 52. And after running this line of code, we can use the syntax of the patchwork package, as you can see in line 54. And in this line of code, I'm simply adding the plot object, which is containing the flag of Switzerland, to the plot object, which is containing our scatter plot. So if you run line 54 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our plot is updated. And as you can see this time, we have added the flag of Switzerland with a y-axis limit on the left side of the plot window and our scatter plot with x-axis limits on the right side of the plot. So if we want, we can also modify the axis position of the flag of Switzerland and we can do that as you can see in lines 56 to 74. So in lines 56 to 71, I'm creating another modified version of our Switzerland flag. So if you run these lines of code, another plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called my image mod 2. And in line 72 of the code, I'm drawing this plot. And after running this line, you can see that we have created another modified version of our flag of Switzerland. And this time the flag of Switzerland is ranging from the y-axis positions minus 2.5 to plus 4. And we have done that in line 71 of the code, because here you can see the y-min and y-max arguments are specified according to the limits of the flag of Switzerland. Now in the next step, we can add this modified version of the flag of Switzerland to our scatter plot, as you can see in line 74 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that another plot is created at the bottom right. And this time we have added the flag of Switzerland to the left of our scatter plot in a certain y-axis limit range. So until now we have combined one PNG file with one plot object. However, it's also possible to add multiple PNG files to a plot. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 76. So in this line of code, I'm downloading another flag. So this time I'm downloading the flag of Germany. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that another download has been made. And we can read this PNG file into R, as you can see in line 79 of the code. So if you run this line of code, a new image file is appearing at the top right, which is called myimage2. And now, similar to the previous example, I'm creating a ggplot2 plot, which contains the flag of Germany. So if you run lines 81 to 99 of the code, a new plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called myImageMod3. And as you can see this time, we are annotating two images. So in lines 94 to 96, I'm annotating the first image, the flag of Switzerland. And in the second annotation, I'm annotating the flag of Germany, as you can see in lines 97 to 99. So we can draw this plot, as you can see in line 100 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom right that a new plot is appearing and this plot is showing the flag of Switzerland in the same axis position as before. However, this time we have added on top the flag of Germany at a lower position on the y-axis. Now in the last step of this tutorial, we can use this plot to combine it with our scatter plot, as you can see in line 102. So if you run this line of code, our plot is updated once again. And as you can see, now we have drawn the flag of Switzerland at a certain y-axis position, the flag of Germany at a certain y-axis position, and on the right side of the plot, the scatter plot that we have created in the beginning of this tutorial. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. 
Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.